Welcome to Dragon's Den, where Canadian entrepreneurs slay wealthy dragons with the best business ideas money can buy. We've spent, to this point, a million dollars. What? I think it's unfair to say it's a gong show, simply because you, we... You proved it. That's the we did not. Self-made multi-millionaire Robert Herjavec heads one of the fastest-growing internet security firms in the country. Before launching his own global equity income fund, Kevin O'Leary made his fortune selling billions of dollars worth of software. Greg Wilson is known as a philanthropist, entrepreneur, and a billion-dollar dealmaker with a heart of gold. Marketing maven Arlene Dickinson is a master trend spotter with a million dollar eye on the next big thing. And Jim Trilliving, a former cop who heads an international franchise empire worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Here in the den, High finance is a spectator sport. The object? Convince five wealthy dragons to invest their own fortunes in your best business ideas. First up, a master mechanic who wants to franchise her all-female auto repair shops. And with 99 Mr. Lube locations, she's aiming her pitch directly at Jim. Hello, dragons. My name's Jessica Gilbank. I'm from Toronto, Ontario. My company, you're gonna love this, Jim, is called Ms. Lube by Mechanchick. These are my Mechanchicks, and we're an all-female garage. Jim, you gonna sue these people right away? Right away. Jim, sue them. Well, I'm sure your lawyers are way better than mine, but I do have some. Good. <laughs> Good answer. We might get to meet. <laughs> What I'm here today to ask for and to actually offer to all of you as an opportunity is $500,000 for 35% interest in what would be a second location, which would be called Little Miss Lube, which would be a quick service facility. Is that your logo there? It is, yes. But why do I give a damn that it's women doing the work? We have male customers that come in and actually are very thankful that we're there because they feel like now they can let their guard down. They're not emasculated by having to pretend they know what they're talking about. Women would trust you more. I believe that well, you, actually, you have a lot our of female clients. Well, actually, market is pretty much everyone. I actually think you have a very interesting idea. If you don't know what you're doing when you go into a shop, it's intimidating. Right. I like it. Jessica opened her first Ms. Lube in downtown Toronto, and a few months later, business is booming. But while the idea interests Arlene, the name still concerns Kevin. But how is it you can use that name without getting sued into the stone? Because our name is Ms. Lube by Mechanchick Incorporated. But all, but, I it's mean, not it, Mr. Lube. But it's so close. So it doesn't it's matter. So close. Doesn't. Jim, what do you think? You're in this business, you haven't said a word. I have to be careful what I say. That means you're gonna sue them into the stone age. Could be, yeah. If I had lube in my brand, I would step on you like a cockroach. And I would do that just to make your life bad. And it's going to happen to you. Let's move past the fact that your name could be a problem. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about whether or not there's a business idea here that's right. scalable and that's something that we can do something with. Right. You actually probably don't make money yet because you've only been in operation 90 days, right? We've been open for almost three months. In that time frame, we've sold $25,000. The profit on that is about $5,000. So we've been able to cover our costs. Did you pay yourself anything? No, I don't take a paycheck. You can't do that forever. You've got to eventually eat something. Why 500000 when you started the first one for three twenty? The second location, it's an income property with three apartments and a retail storefront, but in the back of it is a large garage. So you want to buy it? Right. The $500,000 will go towards opening a second Ms. Lube, 
But Robert discovers a slow leak in her pitch. But Jessica, we're not investing in your current garage that's at 384. Right. You're keeping that. Yes. No, no, it's all part of, no? No, that would be the lubrication service. Okay, wait a second. No, the no, idea she's only asking us so to invest. So we're not going to be able to participate in your existing business? I give you a check for 500000 What do I get a Right, you of? own a quick lube service. I don't own a piece of what exists today? No. Are you out of your mind? Jessica, why wouldn't you let us invest in what you have today? What would stop you from saying, we're in this as partners, let's get going? Why, why well, are you holding that aside? I think because I've worked so hard and I've put so much money into that I didn't location. work very hard to make my $500,000 i am going to give you. No, I no, never and I don't it mean it. just fell out of the sky. It did? Yeah, it, it, every day I wake up, there's 500000 beside it. But you remember what it was like when you started your first business, Yes, I do, right? and that's why I think it's outrageous what you're asking. Okay. It's, it's well, ridiculous. I, I mean, you have nothing now, and there's a, you know at least some revenue. You have no profits. The very least, you'd have to throw that into the kitty, and it still isn't worth a million and a half. Well, this is where you, you know, project and be optimistic about the idea, and know that that quick lube service. This is where I say plus, you're greedy, and you're not realistic. And you're going to run into guys like me all the time with this kind of ask. It'll never happen. I think, this is, this, I think this is where you say you're a bit naive. I was quite with you. I, mm -hmm. I love the idea of it. As an investor, how could we get there? I mean, there's nothing for us to invest in other than an idea. You've got no revenue on this new location. You've got a name that could potentially be a problem. Yep. You're very smart. You're, a, you're smart in a lot of ways, and you're right. not so smart in a lot of right. ways, which has me very troubled. For those reasons, I'll have to be out. I'll say it to you this way. There's a truck behind you. I can see the truck. Yeah. And you come to me and you say, give me 50 grand for, the, for half the truck. Right. I'm interested. Yeah. What you did is you came out here and said, here's thin air. Right. Give me 50,000 for thin air. Right. There's nothing there. I mean, yeah. it's, it's... No, it's 500,000 for thin air. Well, it's 1.5 million value for thin air. I, I gotta be out. I don't care about the women in the trade. I don't care about the story. I don't care about anything. Well, you that. should, because that's the business I don't. model. I'm it's trying the to business figure model. Out, no, you're using my time. I want to invest my money. That's all I care about. And what you proposed was absolutely unworkable in any way. It's impossible to give you any money. I'm out. I was looking for a way to make something happen here. But you got no skin in the game, so what confidence do I have that you're going to spend any time or money on growing the second location? You're contributing nothing. Doesn't make any sense to me. I'm out. Jim? I'm out. Wow. That's the least we've ever heard Jim say. That's because his lawyers are on stun in the back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got a problem with the name, I can tell you that right now. Good luck. She doesn't want to give us a business that's working. She yeah. wants to sell us a concept. Yeah. Jim's still not saying a word. No, I can't. You can't, yeah. Because I know what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to be pretty. That is a case where the big foot comes out of the sky. Yeah. The part that is a concern for me is having spent so much money on the branding and, you know, to have to go back and change all of that will be a major, major hit. Um, but if that's life, that's life in business. Coming up, Whoa. the dragons go gaga over a new gadget. Okay, I want to buy this one. And later... Let him have it. Let him have it. Gently. Robert takes one for the team. Welcome back to the program. I'm Diane Buckner. Next in the den, a Calgary snowboard enthusiast who'd like to ride year-round and has invented a way to do it. This way. Um. Oh my god, is that ever cool? 
It's a recreational vehicle this 23-year-old built in his spare time, and he knows exactly how much he needs to put his invention into production. That is cool. Very cool. Okay, you've sold five of them. Yeah. Arlene, are you getting one too? It, does it have a high heel version? <laughs> Hi, my name is Trevor, originally from Ontario. I'm living in Calgary right now. I'm looking for $74,387.35. I like people with specific numbers. For what point of your business? Uh, 35%. All right. <laughs> What's it called? Schmoto board. Schmoto board. S-C-H-M-O-T-O board. Why? I've thought of a million names and people are just like, hey, why don't you just go drive a Schmoto board? And I just thought that was awesome. Who invented this? But I invented a remote control gas skateboard. Gas skateboards exist in China, but they're, they've got a wire on them, which makes it so it, there's no kill switch if you drop that wire. I want to ride it. Of course. Whoa. Using a remote control throttle, drivers can reach speeds of up to 30 kilometers an hour. Trevor plans to retail his Shimoto boards for about $1,000 a pop. Yeah, baby. It uh, takes a little uh, getting used yeah. to it. Once you're used to it, though, you become a better snowboarder. OK, I want to buy this one. You could put this on the street? Yes, technically it's a moped by laws. The rules of the moped industry is that it has to be underweight, under speed, and manually powered. When you've been roaring around Calgary, what do the police have to uh, say? The when... only thing that I've been bothered with is how cool is that? They stop, they give me thumbs up, they, they ask what it is, it's a gas skateboard, they're like, that's awesome, yeah, carry that's on. it. The safety issue in this is yeah, gigantic. It, yeah, it's right at your own risk. It's snowboarders. But who's going to do this. that? Can you put a muffler system on a little less noise? This is it right here, actually. He's got all the answers. And it's a silencer. It probably cuts it in about half decibels. So. Trevor, is there any question we can ask that you don't have a good answer for? No, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. So we got to ask, why such a specific ask? Uh, it's inventory. It's not based on my company's worth. I'm going to put 100 of these on the floor with that money. Do you have 100 orders? I have stores in Calgary willing to sell them. Yeah, okay, so you get a 1,000 orders. Where do you get those done? I'm planning to outsource if I need to, but I can handle about 100 a week. You can make 100 a week with, yes. what, a couple of guys working with Three. you? Three. Three of you? Yes. Wow. There's no dispute that people will buy this. It's an extreme toy. I don't know if I see the business, though. I see it as a great business for Trevor. I'm not seeing the investable. I could do it without you guys. It would just take longer. <laughs> <laughs> I like you, but I don't need you. That's the way you have to be in all your relationships. <laughs> all right, Trevor, you know, it's a, it's a great toy and, uh, or transportation vehicle, and I enjoyed riding it, but it, I don't really understand how I can be an investor and ever get my capital out of it. That's the oh, problem. you'll have your 75000 back by Christmas if I sell 500 of them. Good idea, nice design. You've definitely sold one to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not, I don't see the business, I'm out. I've admired what you've created here and I enjoyed writing it. Thank you. Um, no, not for me, I'm out. Thank you, really. <laughs> I'm just out. No, I, I okay. have nothing I can I add. It's, it's a very cool wow, product. Wow, that was the shortest out you've ever had. <laughs> yeah, it's very cool. But. For three dragons, a motorized board does not a business make. But Jim and Brett are still along for the ride. Are you going to give up your day job to do this? Uh, don't want to, because I make a lot of money, and that's the only reason I was able to get this done. But what is if your I day job? To, I'm a transport truck driver. Ah. Trevor, this isn't a business. Let's do it. I'm gonna round things up a little bit here and make it compelling for you. You were looking for 74, 387, 35. I'm gonna make it 74, 388 dollars <laughs> even for 50% of the company. 49. We need to be 
equal partners. Deal. Done. Well done. <laughs> Jeez, I didn't even get to bid. Yeah, wait, there might be another offer. Oh, 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 oh. oh. I think there is. Coming in, Jim? Coming sure. in? Sure. Are you coming in? I'm in. Jim's in. I'm in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I gotta get you a new job. Day 100%. Job. First well thing done. first. Well done. Thank you very much, really. I think I might have to quit my job and get to work. This is, this is where the work really begins. Coming up. Come on, Kevin, let's take him on. A face-off goes from fun to fiery. Yeah. We've spent, to this point, a million dollars. What? Welcome back to the program. I'm Diane Buckner. Next in the den, two inventors from Caslow, BC, who want to score a deal with the next generation of table hockey games. No, oh, the Nordique. <laughs> oh, I remember them. Hello, Dragons. My name is Dan Sammartino. And I'm Darren Watt. We are co-founders of All In Sports Entertainment Incorporated. We are a game manufacturing company located in Caslow, British Columbia, Canada. We are proud and excited to introduce to you Body Check Pro Tournament Table Hockey. Yes! Body Check, I want to play. Come on up, guys. I want to play Body Check. Jim, we wanted you to come up, too. Wait a second, this is the classic old hockey game. It's done on, up in so many on, special see. ways. Come on, Kevin, let's take them on. Let's, yeah, let's go here. Oh, oh did you see that say? Did you see that say? Dan and Darren have been working on Body Check for 10 years. They claim it's a much improved version of a game that's been popular for decades. Put in the center, baby! Oh, oh, defense, this is, this defense! Thing roll. These roll far better. Whoa! Oh, it's a roll. Childish. Works. Oh, oh, great save, right, kids. Great save. Oh, 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 no! But Arlene's not only been left on the bench, she can't see what the boys are so excited about. What's different about this game? I don't, I'm not, maybe There's I There's 25 things different about what? this game, Arlene. The smooth fingertip control that the rods have, the angles for shooting, the passing that can be played. It's better, it's better. Dan and Darren, what are you looking for? We are looking for- A bunch of middle-aged men to give them money? We are looking for a growth capital investment of a quarter million dollars for 10% of our company. 10%? 10 oh, yes, that's a two and a oh, half come million on, you're not worth two and a half Why million Why didn't you tell us that before we played it? We are worth two and a half million dollars because Why? we're entering a six billion dollar industry. What are industry. your sales, Dan? We're selling them wholesale for 3,300. Do you know how small the air hockey and table hockey industry is? To be worth two and a half million dollars, you need to sell 750 in the first year. That's right, and that's, that's right exactly in line right. with what we're doing. We have a thousand games anticipated sales in the first year, 2,000 in the second year, 5,000 in the third year. We are entering the coin-op amusement game industry. So it's not a matter about buying it for yourself and playing it. This game is designed as a, a revenue producer. Dan and Darren aren't relying on the home game market. Their plan, sell thousands of games to the same distribution companies that put Pac-Man in bars 30 years ago. Now, what do you think these can pull in if they're busy for a couple hours a night in a bar? What are they going to generate for revenue for the bar owner? All it takes is a couple hours a day of play to generate $200 a week in the coin box. What did you spend putting this together? We've spent, to this point, a million dollars. What? What? Oh, my goodness. Stop. You need a mind check, not a body check. You, you spent a million dollars? We spent $300,000 of our own money. We spent $375,000 of investor money. Oh. And the $380,000 for conservative labor cost of how much time we have spent. We have a fully outfitted 11,500 square foot shop that is ready to produce product. Why build the factory before you have the orders? We had testing done and we've got an amazing reaction from people in the bars. Think of it as, in Brett's business, drilling an uh, oil well. You can spend a million dollars drilling the well, and if there's nothing there, well, you spent that money, and you go on to another hole until you hit one. Yes. That's the way it is in the coin operation. But he has business. some holes hit that are producing oil. have a chance of making hundreds of millions of dollars. We have drilled and we have come up 
with a wind. You're still drilling, buddy. You haven't hit any oil yet. There's risk in doing everything, but poop is going to happen to you. And that's why you try and value a business based on what it makes today. Right now, you make this. Zero. Zero. You have no revenue. Dan, I can't take you seriously with your $2.5 million valuation. I just can't. Sure you can, because... I can't. I can't. Because it's I, so crazy. A hit game. Dan, a hit game Dan, in the coin-op industry. Dan, Dan, you've been hit by a puck. I honestly don't think that you've considered the target markets that we're able to reach. We have a game here Darren, with the coin-op. you've got op. five guys Darren, you, here. Five guys all telling you the same thing. Maybe they're right. Is there a possibility that you're crazy about the valuation? Well, it, it really depends on the blue sky. What kind of money can it generate? What kind of money can it make? Isn't that what venture capital is about? No, it depends on what's generating today. You're nuts, you're nuts. You're both nuts. You think we're idiots here? You think we okay, made our I, money okay, by making okay, investments okay, like okay. that? Kevin, stop. Let's, are you guys are in you or out? out? Yes. If, are you out? We would if we had I'm the out. sales. I'm out. Arlene? Out. I'm out. I will buy one for my cottage. I must have one of those. Kevin, if that means that you want to buy one, I, Jim probably wants to buy one. He may want to buy 700 for his restaurant. Jim, do you see potential for this in Boston Pizza? You know what? This isn't going to work. Your, your chances of this working are slim and none and slim left town. I'm out. My offer to your investment is zero. I'll buy a game. Call me when you're ready. I'm going to give you my number. I'll buy one. I'll send you a check. I'll give you a credit card number. I want it delivered. Jim, you will find in the bar. <sighs> Kevin, when do we pick the check up? I'm so frustrated with you guys. I actually want to buy your product, and then I want to beat you with a stick. <laughs> <laughs> now get out of here. Do we have time for a quick game? Could you stop talking? <laughs> Great game. Come on, Fred. <laughs> I'll do the goal later. Jim, come on! It's the greatest Jim, game in the world. Two it's against one, but he's hot. He can handle it. And this is the difference between men and women, right here. There it is. Put in the center, baby! Oh! It's uh, definitely one of the most popular games. Uh, we put it into the coin-op industry. It's going to go number one. We know it. thought the last pitcher got a rough ride, our next hopeful entrepreneurs didn't fare any better. First up, the Fazari brothers from Hamilton, Ontario, who presented their weighty invention. And my brother's gonna unveil it, and it's called the Fazari Press. Looks like a medieval torture machine or something. You squeeze under it. They came for $60,000 to develop their prototype that challenges a basic push-up. And now you don't need a trainer or anything. The Fazari Press suspends heavy free weights over your upper back. You look just like that, I'm sure, Robert. Maybe, Brent, if you want to try out the machine, because I heard you like to work out. <laughs> I'd like to see this. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's shaking. His legs are shaking. That's never a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> Guy's a he-man. But in the end, the dragons found their numbers kind of flabby. You guys think that's worth $300,000? No, did we just finish our prototype? No, we we have no prototype. business. Are you guys married? Hey. <laughs> no. no. Oh, we're brothers, yeah? Uh, we're brothers. Yeah. We're brothers. Because you might get attention from a bunch of girls at the gym, but you're not going to get attention from the money. By out. Next into the den, Kissa Bumstead and Nicole Newark from Kamloops and Williams Lake, BC. No! They came for $115,000 to franchise their all-female kickboxing gym called Kicks for Chicks. We are owned by women, run by women, for women. Oh, we support self-empowerment. As hard as you can. <laughs> Start time. Keep it up. Would any of you like to try? No. Oh, no? come on, there's gotta be somebody who wants to try. Arlene seemed to have a knack for it. Come on, Arlene, <laughs> stop the madness. Good job. Arlene, I think you can take her. 
but Robert discovered why it's popular with women. All right. <laughs> After kicking around the idea, the dragons declined. The crotch kicking. It's just a thing for guys that just, you know. I have two daughters, I'm all for that. Finally, Eli and Ofra Gershwin from Thornhill, Ontario, needed $500,000 for their Twist Again exercise machine. We're actually offering a product that has everything in one. So he's now working all of his muscle, including his core, including his upper body. Arlene's in. <laughs> Look at how fit he is. But if twisting and balancing can strengthen your core, no sales can weaken your pitch. We've seen other exercise devices on this show. I'm sure. And here's the same thing we say to them. Do you have any sales today? No, we don't, we don't have any sales. I'm Come on. You've got a nice set of machines here with the Lazy Susans. <laughs> uh, I don't see them as a business for that reason I'm out. Then it came time for Arlene to weigh in. This is the quietest Arlene has ever been. She's Arlene, been speechless since he walked what out. What percentage shirt do on. they want? I have no idea. <laughs> How much money are they looking for? I have no idea. I'd like to say that I know a lot about your business, but I really didn't hear a lot. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm up. <laughs> Coming up after the break, the ultimate brain wreck. Here's what's going to happen. You see the green arrows? You're going to follow those out of here now. And later. The real value of your business is yeah. Peggy, that she stuck with you for 10 years. Season two survivors finally tell all. If anything, they made us even more determined. <laughs> Welcome back to the program. I'm Diane Buckner. Next in the den, Sharon Yetman from Sundridge, Ontario, with her patented way to make subway traffic more efficient. She's from a small town, but she thinks she knows a thing or two about mass transit, and she's pulling out all the stops for her pitch. It's more interesting. Hello, dragons. My name is Sharon Yetman, and I'm from the town of Sundridge, Ontario, a town of a thousand people. My product today is called the Subway Barrier Wall with Enhanced Passenger Flow. I'm seeking $500,000 for 51% for the ability for you to be part of this new innovation solution I call platform technology. I'll be right back. Sharon's setting the scene with the help of a homemade subway system run by her family. All aboard! Hold on a second, hold on. We have to let the people off first. This invention you're about to learn about has the power to move entire cities faster. And you don't have to put a shovel into the ground. You don't have to put new subway lines in. You don't have to build new roads. What do you have to do? You separate the inflow from the outflow. Like a sewer system, you go in and you go out. A demo. Amen for that. Come on down. Let's Everybody. all go on the subway. Let's all go on the subway. Come on, Brad. Come on, I'm worried Kevin. about getting lost. Come, no, on. No, no. Come on. The traditional method is the train's coming in and then everybody comes together. Yeah. Come on, everybody. Come, come together. on, come on, come on. Sharon's trying to show how the average system creates a rush hour nightmare. I wanted to go on, not off. And the subway platform plan would optimize the flow of foot traffic by guiding passengers using color-coded signs. All right. This is Ready? where you get to go right. to work. Okay, come on, let's go. <laughs> that was amazing. But the dragons are curious about how someone from Sundridge, Ontario could become a subway expert. Are you a traffic flow designer? What's your background or experience in doing this? My background is common sense. Sometimes that goes a long way. Absolutely. Sure Thank you, sir. Good answer. Wow. Simple common sense thinking. I have mastered the ability 
to separate passenger flow. You must separate the flow to increase the efficiency. Okay, I, I get it. So to make money with this, which is why we're all together today, you would go to the governments that control these platforms, show them this idea, and try and sell it to them. Is that the idea? Uh, working with subway systems around the world. Have you talked to any subway systems? I have indeed. In and fact, they, what they, they have said sought to you? my expertise. Right. But they consult with you? Five. Five. Awesome. Then, How did they find the, you? The, the, I originally approached them, and they said it's not safe. They approved. Sharon, I, I don't, you know what? I'm sorry, but I'm out. Sharon, I'm trying to get you to land this plane and tell us how we make money, because we're flying around Kevin. in the atmosphere. You haven't tied the idea to where we make money. Do you realize that the savings of 20 seconds go will allow for... I know, but how do we make money with it? 88 train loads of passengers can come to downtown Toronto every day if we can save 20 seconds of dwell time. How do you do that? You have to bring order. You have to bring uh, efficiency of flow. Efficiency of flow isn't this going to work. It's not going to help. Sharon, hold the madness here. Hold the madness. He asked you how to make money. I don't think you know how. I'm out. The way to make money you is out, you Kevin? have to promote it professionally. Okay, Sharon. Sharon, this doesn't work. I'm out. Here's what's going to happen. You see the green arrows? You're going to follow those out of here now, because we're all out. Uh, 27 million cars off Toronto highways. We're out. We're out. Let the green arrows do the talking. 300,000. Now, not an ABS pipe, we know. No, no, in real no, Sharon, it's product over. It's that's over. made to code. It's over. I'm just showing it to you. Catch that subway. She's a subway expert from a town that has no subway. That's why it's a fresh idea, Robert. You have to separate the flow to improve the efficiency. I guess they just don't use the subway very much. And now for a Dragon's Den update. Two years ago, John and Peggy Melito braved the den to pitch their sports puzzle trivia business. These are books I had done by a publisher. Crosswords, word finds, and assorted word games, all on sports trivia. Kevin and Jim were quick to go on the offensive. I want you to go home and burn all that stuff because it'll have value. It'll create warmth. That's pretty it's mean, Kevin. I'm telling you, this is a bad idea. I kind of, I kind of beg to differ. How long are you going to keep beating yourselves with a stick like this? Yeah. Well, Wake up and smell the hockey year. puzzles. It's over. <laughs> And things turned personal after the couple revealed they'd spent $40,000 of their wedding money publishing their books. How could you let him spend all your money on this? You know what, because I believe in this. John, I gotta tell you, the real value of your business is yeah. Peggy, that she stuck with you for 10 years. After that, the Molitos ignored our calls for two years. But we were finally invited to their hometown of Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, where they've remained committed to their sports puzzle business and to each other. The dream's totally alive. Actually, it's, it's blossoming more and more. If anything, they made us even more determined. That kind of attitude landed them a deal with a national retailer. So far, we've been able to work with Zellers across Canada, so we have, we have several outlets that carry our books now. Did any sell today, or you don't even know? Yes. How many? Um, about 10. Ten, no kidding. The Molito's business is still small. They've sold just 2,500 copies since appearing in the den, an experience that still stings. It, it was over the top. If they actually wanted to talk business and about the product and where they think it should be, besides burning it, then I would have walked away feeling a little bit better. I'm a happy person. I enjoy life. I, I'm, I'm trying to be happy by nature. Oh, I got into the pool. Those people seemed to me evil. And despite the dragon's doubts, John and Peggy's marriage is still going strong. With this one. Blue happily married. With a four-year-old. That's delicious. <laughs> Look at your mouth. Sorry, Kevin. The only thing burning here is the love between me and Peggy. Coming up. How about this? I get Arlene to apologize to you. I'm not worried about apologizing. Right. I take it 
from the professionals. New software sparks a fight between the dragons. I think it's unfair to say it's a gong show simply because you, we... You proved it. Watch no, the three of you. Not. Welcome back. I'm Diane Buckner. Next up, entrepreneurs who are certain they're sitting on the next big thing. Now, they must convince the dragons. In fact, these two software developers say they've invented a new way for big media companies to attract millions more users to their websites. Hello, dragons. Uh, my name is Michael DeMonte. This is Jonathan Keebler. Uh, we're from Toronto, Ontario. And, uh, <clears throat> sorry. And we're here today to uh, show you scribblelive.com, which is our, uh, our live blogging site. And we're also here to ask for $250,000 at 20% uh, of our company. Just to give you a little background, if you guys are familiar with the web, back in the day, web 1.0 was very, very uh, passive. You just kind of sat there, you absorbed the information, and it came to you. But nowadays, we're sort of in the web 2.0 phase, where you're talking about MySpace and, and Facebook and all those guys, and you're getting a lot more collaboration. So what the next phase of that development is, is something called web now. Web now is the idea of instant information. No longer do you want to sit around and wait for information. What we are is a, a live publishing platform that allows multiple authors to uh, collaborate on an event in real time and post content, whether it's text or images or video, all to a single thread. You're a blogging site. Or live blogging site, that's correct. Sort of one person who creates the event, and that person invites multiple people to the event. So five dragons could be working on it at once. Exactly. Emma here is actually live blogging this entire conversation right now. And as you can see, it's still being typed as I, uh, as I move through. Scribble Live is software that directs Facebook and Twitter traffic to any web event users are chatting about, including this very pitch. Right now, Diane's actually in the back uh, Twittering right now, and they're coming into our live stream. And they think media companies would readily pay monthly fees to include Scribble Live as a feature on their website. So here's some of the quotes that we've been, we've been handling. This is a woman named Janie Gibson from The Guardian UK. And this is what she said, I didn't really get how Twitter was useful for mass reporting until Scribble Live appeared. What she did during the G20 summit is she had six or seven reporters scattered throughout the G20 summit, and they were all Twittering and sending in information. So what you got is this, all these different perspectives happening about G20. So you have this sort of unlinear stream of information, unlike television, where you, when you're watching television, you're just getting one point of view. It's the future. I liked all this, but I want to understand how we make money. Our monthly clients, that's how we make money. But who are your clients? Right now, we have a major media company here in Canada. Which one? The Score. We also have a major broadcaster here in Canada, Rogers. They're writing you a check every month. Yes, they are. Every time that page gets loaded, they're getting ad revenue here and ad revenue here. In this case, I don't care about that ad revenue. Let them have that. That's right. the whole point. I want them to give me the monthly fee, sign on more TV stations, do more programs with them. So it's a monthly subscription that yes. you're asking for, and then you're just going to get the recurring and revenue out of that. And the as professional well, for services of the customization. Yeah. Arlene, mm -hmm. do you see this taking off? Absolutely. This is this is the future. By redirecting traffic, they say Scribble Live can increase a website's ad revenue. But for some dragons, this new media model is still unproven territory. Michael, I never felt old until social networking came out. And I've been in the internet business for a long time. My 15-year-old son gets that, and I think there's people out there that get. It, it's just not for me. I'm out. So you've got the score and who Rogers else? the score, and we have Hearst Publishing in the US. Well, then, if you're in Hearst, you get into publishing, you get into everything. Exactly. exactly. You in on this? Sure. We're on score now, and we're on the back of boards. We're on everywhere. I'd like a play in this you space. Do it? Yeah. Okay. Well, I wanna, let, let, are you going to check it out? Yeah. I'm going to offer you $250,000 for 50% 50 of the company with a proviso that I pick up the phone in the next week and talk to somebody that's in this space. They're the people that know this far better than I do. Anybody else? A 
Michael, isn't the beauty of Twitter you know what, that Michael, it's not edited? Michael, they, they, they've all... Let, no, let, they let, haven't got out. Just wait a minute. You made an offer. i got to no, make some statement. No, now you're back in. Okay. Well, you know, here's the what struggle I'm having with it. I never went out in the oh, first place. Oh, I thought place. you were out. I'm an investor. You, you know, I'm, I'm flipping Arlene. back and forth. I'm listening to Arlene, the voice about? of the future. Trying to keep we were you. talking about you. I'm trying, to keep you. I'm trying to keep you. I'm trying to keep a question. <laughs> Are you kids finished? Yeah. No, I'm all, all right. Done. Listen, don't bite each other. Now, generally in these high-tech deals, you give your dough away, you kiss goodbye forever, and hopefully down the road, some guy buys the company. I don't think that's our play. So how do I get my money back? When, when the money's there. I'm going to be making hundreds of thousands of dollars a month. Just tell me when you want to get paid. You know, I like this guy's shtick. Jeremy, you in on this? No, he's mad at me. No, no. I am mad at you. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure it out why it's going to work. I'd offer more money than she does, but... Uh, no, no, let's keep yeah. her in the mix. No, 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 I, I, I don't want... want her in the mix. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, come offer. on. Jeremy, I thought, She's got a small I thought offer. you were a bigger yeah. man than she, that. Don't, Arlene, listen, give him listen, a hug. I get Arlene to apologize to you. We give no, her a I'm third... I'm not worried about apologizing. All right. <laughs> I'm, I, I take <laughs> shit from professionals. <laughs> she doesn't even know how to start. <laughs> I, I made him a 250 for 50%. You guys should come in if you want. Sure. All right, I'm in a third. Sure, I'd like to take it. All right. You got three of us, 50%, yeah. and uh, Arlene's magic phone call. Can you give us a sec? Yeah. yeah. Keep in mind when you're back there, there's yes. going to be a friggin' gong show working with the three of them. Do you want in? You've no, got that, a competing would, offer that, that exactly the same with just one person without the gong show. So you're going alone? Wait going a minute. Alone. I okay. think it's unfair to say it's a gong show simply because you have, we... You proved it. Watch no, the three we did of you. not. Wait a minute. Financial services, advertising, huge retail player. I don't know this guy. I've never seen so many people bid so much money so feverishly for something none of them understand except Darlene. Two offers are on the table, both for $250,000 and both for half the company. But Brett's hoping they'll prefer to deal with one dragon instead of three. Well, four out of five ain't bad. Yeah. <laughs> We'd love to get Robert in there, though, but uh, 50% is not going to happen. No, it's not going to happen. 35? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Settle at 30 if he counters. Uh, 50% seems a little too high for the amount of work and effort and the client base that we already have, have, have gained over the course of the last six weeks. We're certainly willing to up our, you know, up our original, uh, you know, estimate of 20%. But we're thinking that we're comfortable with a 50% increase with that, which would essentially be 30%. And I'm wondering how you guys feel about that. I'll make it easy for you. See if you can get a deal done with the gong show and then come to me. Okay. But I'm okay at 30%. We're okay at 30%. We have a deal. Excellent. Perfect. Thank you. Looking forward to working with you. We're not gong shows. <laughs> uh, Dragons, you're going to make a lot of money. Uh, you know, glad to be working with you. Next time on a special edition of Dragon's Den. Oh, yeah! Past pitchers finally tell all. Right after the show, they wanted to punch Kevin in the face. How they fared after the handshake. Sail, way to go. <laughs> and after the shakedown. I felt like committing suicide for about the first week. Plus, the Dragon's dish on deals gone bad. Now, that was a huge mistake. Really? It was a deal that got away as far as I'm concerned. Dragons, you missed out on an amazing opportunity. I'm Diane Buckner. See you again in the den. <laughs> <laughs>